23 and 46. Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Yes.
myself and the Word of God. Yes. On the side of myself, I'd say, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Some don't know, but I've been through a lot. I joke around, I come to men's meeting, give them all kind of heck. <laughs> but I've been through a lot. Amen. Committing my spirit, I know something about it. Mm. Being on the operating table more than four or five times, I know a lot. I'm a cancer survivor. Amen. People say, why is this good? I got a God. Amen. 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 I had 103 degree temperature for about three days. And they couldn't find out what was wrong that day. I heard the doctors giving up. But I heard the sound of this nurse saying, I'm going to break this temperature. And when she broke it, she found out that it had a liver abscess that was very red. And it had to be drained of a special machine. And I said, thank you, Jesus. I went to, I was having a problem with my legs and with my arms, and I went to the neurosurgeon, and he said, well, Carlton, you have to have surgery. And I mean, you have to have surgery in two weeks. First time he found it, he said, well, we got to go to the front. So in the front, they gave me six, uh, three plates and six screws. And then I went back about a couple of years later. He said, Carlton, guess what? I said, what, Dr. Sue? He said, you're in trouble again. I said, really? He said, really. You got to go back under the knife in about two more weeks. And when I woke up that time, I had 12 screws and two rods in the back of my neck. So when I got the bill, and before all this, when I was the surgeon for cancer, I, I told people that was around me, my loved ones, say, if I don't make it, know that I'm all right. But I went for the next surgery. They said it was going to be only two hours, and I think I don't know how many hours it was, because when I woke up, it's longer than what they said. But I told them before I went for that surgery, it's going to be all right. Okay. Because I knew the Lord, I knew He had me. Yes. Okay, when I got the bill, I looked at the bill, and I thought I said seven thousand, and I still have a pick when it said seven thousand. But then I called, I said, "Ma'am, I got insurance to be a hundred percent," and it says seven thousand. She says, "Sir, will you read that bill again?" It don't say seven thousand. It says seventy thousand. But each time I went under the knife, I was sure that I could put my spirit, my soul, my whole being in the hands of the Lord. Amen. So that's what I'm here to talk about for the next six minutes. <coughs> Into thy hands, I commit my spirit. Yes. Committing the spirit as Jesus died on the cross, he said, Father, into thy hands, I commit my spirit. But why did he say this? Let's try to read this a little bit. Let's read some of this for about three minutes. Christ hereby signifies his dependence upon his Father for his resurrection. By the reunion of his soul and body, he commended his spirit unto his Father's hands to receive into paradise, but he wanted him to return it on the third day. See, this whole body that we got, they can kill this whole body, they can do all kinds of things to this body, but if your spirit is right, if your soul is right, you have nothing to worry about. Amen. Jesus here was committing his spirit, his soul, to his body. But he said, Father, I don't want you to keep it for three days because I don't want this body to see corruption. I've only received, I've only given it to you for three days because I don't want you to show somebody that in three days I will rise. And by this it appears that our Lord Jesus, as 
and had a true body, and he also had a reasonable soul, which is fixed in a state of separation from the body. And thus, he was made like unto his brother. This soul he lodged in his father's hand, committed it to his custody, resting in hope that it should be not be left in his. It is a state of separation from the body. No, not so long as the body might see corruption. Christ has hereby left us an example, has lifted those words of David in 31 and 5. David said in 31 and 5, he did not know. He said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. That's where he got it from. He was showing the same thing in all, and he brought it back to the new. He said, as, was, as he, and when, and he did this so he could sanctify us for their use. In death, our great care should not be about our soul, should be in death. Our great care should be about our souls. And we cannot effectually provide for their welfare by committing them now into the hands of God. How many of us have really committed your souls into the hands of God? No matter what's going on with you, arthritis is going on with you, heart failure is going on with you, your mind might be losing its capacity to think again, but how many of us, before these times come about, have committed your soul to God? How many of us are saying that we really trust in God? We trust in Jesus. How many of us are saying that He is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has fallen in His footsteps? Not before we die, but right now. How many of us has committed our souls, our spirits to Him? The spirit of grace and the devil committing them in His hands to make perfect in His holiness and happiness. We must show that we are freely willing to die. That's some, one thing that's wrong with church folks. We want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. <laughs> Something is wrong with that. Father, to the hand, I commit my spirit. We have to learn how to commit our spirit. When people do things wrong against us, commit your spirit. Like the brother said, he wanted to say something else to that man. But you get to commit your spirit. When your wife or your husband is not doing right, you get to commit your spirit. What does the prophet of man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Commit your spirit. That's what Jesus did. And he was our example. But he knew that one day, even if somebody killed his whole body, he knew that on the third day his father was going to give him his spirit back. So on the third day, he rose early on the third day. Had all power in his hand. The same thing with us when they get on the nerves too much. When you wake up every day and say, I got power from above. If you commit your spirit, you got to do like Jesus did. Commit your spirit. It's nothing that we need to talk about and have lip child. We get to have it fully in our souls to commit our spirits. So when things go wrong and you don't know what's going on, when you get tired and you don't know how long you're going to be around, they say, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Praise the Lord, Savior. Praise the Lord. You know, out of all of the Good Friday services I've been part of, this is my favorite one. Amen. 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 <laughs> so thank you. 
I, uh, I always write down way more than I need to say. <laughs> Today is no different. But I, I want to just say yes and amen to the promises of God. Amen. I'm thankful one today that I, I say to keep the glory. Lord, strong and mighty. He who knew no sin will offer himself up that I may live. Made a way of escape. Paid the price. His blood was shed. His body was broken. We've been redeemed. Yeah. Yes, amen. Easy, we got away. Couldn't pay the bill. I don't know if you ever went to a restaurant and ate and you know, you have enough money to pay, but you think you just gotta wash some dishes or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one here, there's nothing you had to do. Get it off. Yes, God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Think about what they let them away. They pretend to find uh, some fault in him. I just want to cover this right quick and share a few words, but the trial they, they uh, brought before people bringing Christ was, was illegal. Didn't follow the rules. Committed blasphemy was not a death penalty. Uh, Jewish custom was to stone those who are guilty of capital punishment, not to sent them to be crucified. That was one of the punishments the Romans placed upon them. In order to put someone to death, you need two or more witnesses. You couldn't have a trial, a conviction, and a death sentence on the same day. It's required one day for the prosecution, one day for the defense, and they had to be delivered. And the person had to have a representative the defendant, Christ that night. He was betrayed by one of his own. That's the one that he was when he told them, his disciples, one of you want to betray me. And if it was me, I said, well, it ain't gonna be me. <laughs> they, you know, and then they said, it is I. Is it I? <coughs> you're saying you're not sure of yourself with him? I guess they seen enough stuff to say, hey, you don't know what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> you know, Peter, Peter denied Christ three times. Exactly. Peter, before that, he was willing to pull a sword out and cut a servant's ear off. But yet, he denied Christ three times, and Christ told him that before he did it. So he knew it. When he did it, he came to grips with it. And when the Lord left, he asked Peter, do you love me? And he asked him three times because he denied him three times. He was betrayed by one of his own. 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 11 and 12 tells us that 30 pieces of silver is the price of a slave. Mm -hmm. Judas betrayed the son of the living God by the price of a slave. The Bible says if you strike the shepherd, the sheep shall scatter. Zechariah 13 and 7. Christ's disciples abandoned him for the most part when he was crucified. Psalms 22. It's a prophecy that was fulfilled when Christ was on the cross. He said, Father, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, Elior, Elior, Shabbat, why hast thou forsaken me? You notice one thing in the Bible stands out about this phrase right here. Christ has always called his Father, Father. But at this point, only happens once. He said, my God, my God, and he used it twice. As like my mother used to say to me, Daryl, Daryl. <laughs> David said, Absalom, Absalom. That's, that means something wrong. There was something wrong for him. And he cried out to his father. He was in the flesh. He had to deal with taste some things that he wouldn't familiar with. He was on a cross a total of six hours approximately, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it was a common thing that he was considered the Passover lamb. The Passover lamb was required to be killed from, sacrificed from 12 to 6 p.m.
p.m. which would be evening, sunset. Christ died within that window. He was numbered with the transgression. That's Isaiah 53 and 7. Those those two thieves on the cross, one to the right and one to the left. They numbered him with common thieves. He who knew no sin. The just or the unjust. He was silent before his accusers. Don't you have nothing to say? I don't need to say that because you know what I'm doing my assignment. Mm -hmm. I come to do the will of the Father who sent me. The Bible says in the Gospel of John, his will is that all that he has given him, he shall lose none. He has offered himself up as a ransom that we may be reconciled to the Father. Our sins don't follow us. We've been cleaned. We've been washed. We've been forgiven. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes. We had a God that loved us more than enough. A God that has abundant love. Yes. Let me tell you this about God so you notice. I don't ever want you to leave here thinking anything different. There's only one love God has for you. It's a great love. Yes. There's no in-between love. There's no small love. I just love you just a little or I love you a 40%. He loves greatly yes. in all that he does. His love was so great for us that he gave his son, his only son, who knew no sin. Mm. He offered him up that you may be received. And the evidence that we know that this son is acceptable, we go to no Sunday. Because the tomb is empty. Mm. Mm. I want to share a verse of scripture with you. Here in the Gospel of John, chapter 17. This is Christ's longest prayer in the Bible. We know he's about to be offered up as a sacrifice. And he brought this before the Lord. He says to his Father, verse 23, he says, I am them and thou and me, that they may be perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. Amen. <laughs> what are you saying, preacher? Amen. Jesus the Christ. The righteous said that God the Father loves us the same as He loved them. Oh, what a great price He paid for your life. He paid the price for your life. And He did it while you was not chasing Him. I said thank you on today. Some people call it Good Friday today. I'm going to call it Great Friday. It's a great thing that you are not who you used to be. Without murmuring and complaining. Amen. Amen. I know for sure if it's been me that he'd be offered up. I'd have said, hey, my Martin Mavis. <laughs> remember me? Do you remember how I fed the multitudes of thousands? Amen. Remember when I made the wind and the sea obey me? Amen. Remember when I cast out the demons? When I raised the dead? Remember me? Where are you at? Where are the voices of those? Who he had delivered. They were under the influence of the religious leaders of the day. The Pharisees. He called them hypocrite generation of Bibles. One of them had a nervous check and said, Are you calling you saying we were blind? He said, No, you're not blind, so now you're gonna be held accountable. Because you're so smart. When you know so much. You ought to know better than betray me. It would have been better for Judas not to have been born than to betray Christ. Yes. But Judas did what he was assigned to do. Yes. He did what he came to do. Yes. He's a son of prediction. He was chosen to be the betrayer. Yes. Christ said, have not chosen you twelve, but one of you is a devil. Yes. As a demon. You're not for me. Yes. Everybody in the church, everybody's in the circle. It's not for him. Yes. That's right. yes. Gave himself up on the cross. Even in the mercies of God follow him even unto death. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's something that forgive the people. Because everybody who does something wrong does not know what they're doing. Some of them don't know. Don't be so easily bruised. Christ took a hit for you. You got to be willing to take a hit for somebody. The thing that I like about that stands out to me the most was. When Christ came to the earth, he came to be born in a manger. It's like a stable. It's with animals. He didn't come in a 
golden chariot. He didn't live at the palace. He didn't walk around with a crown on his head. He come to serve. He didn't come to get served. Today, he served as well. He offered up himself. The only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He offered up himself as a ransom that you may be redeemed, of the Father. We have been reconciled because we believe. How many of us believe? Yes. We believe we've been reconciled. Yes. Uh, we've been counted as righteous. Yes. As well, with my soul. Yes, yes and amen yes. to the promises of God. Yes. Because of God is who He is, we are not who we used to be. Yes. 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 Cheryl told her testimony. She's not who she used to be. When, when, when Sister April sang that song, she's not who she used to be. When Sister Paula shared her testimony about her marriage, who, she's not who she used to be. Yeah. Because the Lord is faithful. Yes, yes. He's not slack in His promises and concerns. Yes, yes. I pray that to be offered up as a sacrifice. Therefore, since a sacrifice had to be without spot or blemish, none of His bones can be broken. So when they checked to see as Christ was dead, unlike the others, thieves to the right and left, they pierced the side. The reason why they would break the legs is to speed up the process of dying. You know, being crucified was one of the most brutal forms of punishment in the history of the world. Some people, it all depends on what your physical condition is once you've been nailed to the cross how long it can last. Some people, it took two days to die. For Christ, it only took some hours. Because you remember, he was beaten and whipped and was made to carry a cross. And a lot of theologians say that that cross weighed approximately like 100 or 125 pounds. So he's dragging a cross this after he's been whipped. How much can somebody love you? I'm going to tell you something. You can search all over. You can search all over. Yeah. Look high and low. Yeah. Look under the bed. In the closets. Yeah. In the cupboards. Yeah. You will find none like Jesus. Yeah. None like Jesus. Yeah. None is willing to offer himself up that you may be redeemed. Yeah. So on today, we say thank you. You're not your own possession. 
Your body, soul, and spirit belongs to him. That's why when he resurrects you, he don't just keep your spirit. He go get your body too. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. And this mortal shall put on immortality. Death has been swelled up. Oh, how he loved me. To taste death. He who knew no sin. Precious blood of Jesus. Old blood of Jesus. He washed us clean. The Bible says it's mired more than anything. There's one thing in particular that stands out to me. I, I thought about this over and over, years and years. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of his peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. And it goes on to say in verse 10 here that yet it pleased the Father to bruise him. <laughs> God the Father was pleased that his son would be bruised, that you can be reconciled with him. That's a great love. It's a special thing. You will offer up your own you got. So look at your neighbor and say, We have value. We have value. And everywhere we go, that value goes with us. Goes with us. On, today, On today, you being here in this fellowship brought value. It's a special day. It's a special prize. I'm so thankful. I, I, I'm reminded of, of Brother Barton when I came here. He, he's one of the persons who told me I need to get over here. He was some words that I can't use now. <laughs> he didn't talk me quit fooling around. He said, no. <laughs> so I'm here. I thank the Lord for every soul that He has saved. Every soul, whether I know Him or not, whether it's in this fellowship or somewhere else, every soul that will taste salvation, I thank the Lord for it. I thank Him for His mercy, His goodness, His peace, His love, His understanding. I thank Him for His word. Thank you for families. I, I look out and see my mom, my wife, my, my brothers, my sisters, my relatives. Oh, it's, it's special. Yes. This is your real family. Yes. yes. Jesus is Lord forever. Yes. He gave up himself for us. That should motivate you. Simon's David says, What shall render unto the Lord? For all his benefits to us. For all he's done, for, for being nailed on the cross, nailed to a cross, isn't that amazing? Yes. I'd have been crying every hammer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was just screaming. I was like, hey, somebody help mama, daddy, brother, cousin, neighbor, somebody. But I will never record Christ ever asking them to stop. But you can tell them to stop because he should have could. This is the close of this fellowship. This is our sister Dana. Stand up, Sister Dana. This is your best one. This is it.
Don't expect to be the same. You don't come to know who God is. He reveals himself to you. You stay the same. You can't get that close to him and stay like you used to be. You remember the woman with the issue of blood. She pressed her way. She says that if I can only touch the hem, if I only can get close. Yes. Get close enough to be made whole. My desire today is that you get closer to the Lord. It's also if there's any in the midst of us that's just not even in fellowship. If you don't have a relationship with God, I'm asking you that you will come and receive the Lord in your heart today. Doesn't matter what you used to do or what you used to be. My heart is that you will come unto Jesus. That you will receive him in your heart. spoke of what Christ did on the cross is for those who believe him, believe in him. Got some John chapter 17 verse 9 it says, I pray not for the world but for them that thou hast given me. For those who are going to be hit. Those who are hit. So if there's any in this fellowship today you don't know Jesus you wouldn't sure about where you're at you know, I'll ask you Come to receive them in your heart today. Amen. Come. You need to uh, come to where you at. Also, my next cry would be that if you haven't had a church home, <coughs> a place to be cared for, nurtured, a place to fellowship, a place to prayer, a place of prayer, holiness, righteousness, being like minded, not being a long ranger. Too many long range of Christians. Being a long range don't work. Said long range don't work. Long range don't work. You know, I, I think it'd just be very honorable to go out praising the Lord. Yes. You know, sometimes I, you know, I'm not a singer, but I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think about what song I, I want to sing today, and it's a song that I do, and the only one here this chorus part is like, it's like, oh, oh, nobody like it, nobody like it,
in the presence of the Lord. It's better than being here. God is faithful. He's rich in mercies. Mindful. 
to remember your death on the cross. You who were without sin. You who were righteous. You who were holy in all that you do. All that you say. Everything that you do is good. We say thank you on today. Let our lives never be the same. Ask in the name of Jesus. That your Holy Spirit will rest you and abide that you and keep us. Lead us in the way that we should go, that you might be glorified. That our families be holy, our children be holy, our children's children, their children be holy unto you. And your work for your service. On today, Lord, ask us to bless Christ's church. All who walk in the fellowship, that every need be met. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The church says, Amen. It is well. It is well. My soul. My soul. It is well. It is well. My soul. My soul. It is well. It is well. My soul. My soul. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Neighbor. Neighbor. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be good cheer. Be good cheer. Be holy. Be holy. Be faithful. Jesus, man. Jesus, Jesus. 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 Jes